All right, well, welcome to DMP's Postscripts. Uh, this is the first show of the new semester, and here we are with uh, Chrissy Class. Thanks Hello, for having Chrissy. me. <laughs> Thanks for coming out. So, um, you are a local Thunder Bay musician, obviously. I am. Um, so, maybe uh, let's do the uh, interview thing where we start at the beginning. Okay. Um, how did you first get into music? I first got into music in kindergarten. The first day of school, I went to school, and... Um, there was a piano in the room, and the first thing I went to was the piano for no reason, because I'd never taken any type of lessons, obviously, because I was too young. But I just went to the piano, started fiddling around on it. My parents bought me a piano, so I was always noodling around on the piano and uh, sang in the, in the church choir and school choirs. And then um, in grade eight, I was... Um, we were getting changed for gym class, and we were in the, the um, change rooms, and I was singing along to some music somebody had playing, and everybody's like, oh, my God, you can actually sing. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, I right. guess. I don't know. Like, yeah. I didn't really – I always sang in a group of people. And uh, so unbeknownst to me, uh, my friend signed me up in the talent show, hmm. and so I got my other friend to play guitar, and I sang uh, Up Where We Belong. That was my first song I ever sang. And after the applause, I was hooked. So it's ever since grade eight, really, is when I've I've been full time music. Nice. Yeah. So you got you got the high of performing live in grade eight. Very early just, on, yes. Chasing that high. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this is just something I have to ask because it's been very obtuse in my list of questions uh, about your sleeping habits. Well, because I play in so many bands and. I play a couple of different instruments. I'm I'm newer to the instruments than, of course, than I am to singing. Uh, so I spend a lot of time practicing in the evening, or I'm recording at either my house or my friends' houses because I work on a lot of original music. So you know, by the time or I'm playing, so by the time I end up finishing all those things during, and I also work a full time job. So by the time I'm done, it's like midnight, one o'clock, two o'clock. And I go to bed, and then my dog wakes me up at six for her nuggets in the morning. So nice, classic. <laughs> so it's pretty limited sleep time. But you know what? I wouldn't do it if I didn't love it. So yeah. uh, just carry. You know, I just carry on. I have every once in a while, I'll have a day where I just crash and burn for twelve or thirteen hours, and I'm good to go for another six months. <laughs> That's really all you need. That's really some, all you need. Some caffeine pills. That's <laughs> I think that there's a thing based on what I know about musicians that I like, where the more instruments you learn to play, the less you sleep. Like Prince used to play every single instrument possible. And, he was, and well, every yeah. every instrument well. He's a maestro yes. at all of them. And yes. I like there's rumors that he just didn't really sleep that much and he would no. just he'd walk around his house. And especially too, if you have, he was always writing original music too, right? right? So when you have, when you have all that creativity floating around in your head, it's sometimes impossible to go to sleep. Yeah. And you have to get that out either on paper or, or through your instrument For or sure. whatever, singing. And, and so I'm always constantly creating. So it's the brain never stops. It's like yeah. a little hamster wheel. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's better that it never stops than it never gets going. That's right. right. Exactly. So. Exactly. Um, so since that uh, you play enough instruments where you're up all night doing that, uh, how many bands are you in? I'm in three different bands three right bands. now and about uh, three or four different recording projects. Okay, wow. So I'm, I'm busy. Cool. Yeah, yeah, very busy. I have busy. a two-piece band. Right. I have a rock band and I have a blues band. So the two-piece band is called 2-Bit, right? Correct. 2-Bits, yep. 2-Bit, okay. Um, so uh, where did the name come from? Well, it's actually kind of funny because uh, Peter that I play with in the two-piece band, Peter Gleason. Uh, he also plays with me in the chain. And so we were trying to think up a name that was sort of associated with the chain, but not, you know, not saying that we are part of the chain. So we decided to call it two bits. So we're two bits of the chain. Okay. And so that's, right. how, that's how we came about with the, and then it also indicates that it's a two piece band right. too, as well. It's tongue in cheek. Yeah, tongue in cheek. That's yeah. right. Um, so uh, the blues band, The Chain, speaking of which. Um, you have an album that will be finished this year. We've been working on it for quite a few years, about four or five years now, and uh, it's near near its completion. We have uh, 20 songs recorded. Wow. And we have enough actually for two albums and actually two different types of albums. Mm -hmm. uh, one will be like a blues rock type feel, and the other one's more R&B 
uh, okay. type of R&B and a bit of a jazz influence on the... So we haven't decided yet if we're going to pick certain songs from each of those and make it into one album or actually release two separate albums. That still has to be decided. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, neat. Yeah. You did it. Was it just kind of recording with the band, just the different styles of music came out? S- yeah, because um, at the time, the musicians that were playing in the band, um, two of the musicians who have since passed, they came from a jazz uh, background. And uh, Robbie Jardine, who's also recording the project, he's a guitar player, and he came, he came from a country and country rock background. And uh, Peter and I both come from like a rock type background, and Peter a little bit of pop as well. And, and myself just a bit of blues and rock. So it's, it's all these different eclectic styles that were mixed together and we have a really unique sound um, that, that you can hear a little bit of everything coming out in, in all the different songs. So it's a, it's a pretty interesting eclectic yeah. uh, collection of songs. Yeah, it's some musical fusion. Yeah, that's right. yeah exactly, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Um, the name The Chain, is that? A Fleetwood Mac reference at all? Absolutely not. It no? was just no. It was just a. We were just trying to figure out like we we're and because of our different backgrounds, we thought, well, the chain it kind of links okay. all the different types of music together. Right. So that's how we ended up with uh, with that name. That makes sense. Yeah. Fun, funny coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm a big Fleetwood Mac fan, so as soon as I saw the oh, name the too, chain I written down, I was <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> I do love I do love Fleetwood Mac. Yeah. Yeah. They're so great. They are. Um. So your other band that you're in, Head Rush. Um, talk about that. Like, what, what's uh... so Head Rush has been around for about four years. Um, we do primarily cover songs uh, of the classic rock background, a little bit of current stuff. We try and keep mix it up a little bit so we keep uh, the young people happy and and uh, you know the the a little bit older demographic um, happy. Right. So. And we play a lot of clubs and private parties. Um, so we try and do a little bit of everything that keeps everybody happy. And we've also worked, started working on originals as well. Cool. So, yeah. Nice. Um, how do you find that uh, performing a lot of covers helps you like write original music as band? Does it make the band tighter so that when you start writing originals, everybody's more comfortable to write? Yeah, it's just you get used to playing together as right. a band. And then when you go to write music, you have that cohesion already. And you have um, the way everybody works together, and you, you're like, you know, I, well, I know that he likes this, so let's try and include this. And mm-hmm. you know, you just kind of get used to everybody's uh, personalities and styles, and and it's easier to write when you've already played together, and and it's really easy to get a band together when you're just doing cover tunes for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know a lot of bands in town specifically love focusing on covers because yeah. it, it's a lot easier to put a band together when you have this. Uh, just music that everybody likes already and everybody likes playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. So it's, that's super it's cool. An easier, it's an easier draw to get people to come out and see you and stuff. The Chain, my blues band, uh, we do primarily ori- original music. We have very right. few cover songs in our sets, and we do larger venues. So okay. um, we do, like, openings at the auditorium or blues festival or lar- right. larger stage performances where you're playing – uh, maybe not a full night you're doing like a one hour set or you know like stuff like that so we're able to focus on on all original music for the most part of the set that's super cool yeah it is really cool yeah yeah um, and it's great to hear a nice uh, really good crowd response too when you're doing original music yeah like, that must be super yeah. nice yeah, yeah. Um, so when are is uh, what band are you playing with like Next. In the near future. In the near yeah. future, uh, Head Rush is going to be playing at the Wayland for um, March 11th and 12th. It's a Friday and a Saturday. Okay. Yeah. Super cool. Is this at the Wayland? That's at the Wayland, yeah. Okay. Uh, our class did a show at the Wayland uh, with like local rappers, and I've never been at the Wayland before. So going there, it seemed like a cool place. You Every- know what? It's, it's a really cool atmosphere. Um, it's, it's a local bar, neighborhood, local neighborhood bar. Yeah. And, uh, everybody's very welcoming there's never i don't know it's just a really fun bar to play i never it's kind of like you're probably too young to remember but there was a ba- uh, bar called the in towner okay and uh everybody used to go see the bands play there and this right. is sort of like a smaller scaled down version but without all the fighting and, yeah 
<laughs> and uh, so it's it's just a great atmosphere, and people come there to actually watch music, which is very cool. Cause you That's don't see that rare for this town. Rare for this town, yes. right? People so, usually go to venues to drink in this town, and the music's like, hey, what is this? It's secondary <laughs> some, sometimes, sure. right? Yeah, it's sometimes second- tertiary. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you got that um, right. Yeah, go, yeah, going to the Wayland, it was neat because it's one of those bars where as soon as I walked into, it was in the daytime and it was for school, but it was neat because it's one of those bars where you can see that they have regulars, you know what yes. I mean? And it's yeah. like like cheers for some people. It yeah. really felt like cheers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it does. It yeah. does, yeah. So it was neat. Just like one of those, it's like an old timey, like folky bar, like bars like that I feel like are kind of going away they are and I hope this one stays around for a long time because the owners are great like you know I said hey Gary I said I think I drove by your camp did you get a new he goes yeah we got a new camp he says drop by anytime you like so that's the type of people they are they're really nice they're really really good people to to work for nice bar bar with the community is always great yeah and they're always doing really cool things to keep the community interested and they do fundraising sometimes they do daytime stuff where they'll mm-hmm. have like a like a women's show where they'll feature all different kinds of crafts and jewelry and oh, cool. all, so this, they're always doing different stuff there to yeah. keep the public interested. Nice. Um, yeah. Besides the Wayland, is there any other, like what other venues in town besides like the Blues Fest, which is like a bigger venue? Yeah, and Two Bits plays at uh, Cheers. Uh, we okay. play at the Red Lion, the Foundry. Um, I've done shows at, at Black Pirates Pub, and right. everybody's all the all the uh, club owners nowadays. They're really trying their best mm-hmm. to keep live music uh, live music alive. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, it's it's great to see that there's still some people that care about that. Yeah, for sure. Especially I know just from playing shows at Black Pirates myself. Uh, Black Pirates does a lot, especially for the like, like younger the music young, scene. Yeah, they really give yeah. younger up and coming musicians a chance to get in a show or two yeah. and play with other musicians too, right? Because I know he's doing a show coming up in a couple of weeks. I think there's 25 bands in two weekends. That's crazy. So yeah, that's, that's, that's a cra- I feel crazy. sorry for uh, the sound guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of switch over. Yeah. But, uh, you know, that's that's great for all the, all the young local bands coming up that maybe wouldn't get a chance to play a full night somewhere yeah. it's a little bit harder to get in right when if you're not established for sure yeah especially in this town uh it's super weird unless you like were in a band that has like a name and then you yeah. start your own band and you could like you know a guy who owns a bar that's right yeah. exactly yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> you know a guy that knows a guy right? you know a guy yeah that's how it works for like, booking gigs in this town yeah yeah <laughs> you know exactly. a guy who knows a guy that's right whose niece owns the bar or something like that <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I know that you filmed a music video with Head Rush last year, correct? Yeah, 2020 in the summertime. Okay. Outside, because right. it was COVID, Outside. so we were all spread apart. Social distancing, so, safe. Yeah, social distancing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, I, the college did the filming. Emma Chilton was the director on that one. Right. And uh, we had tons of fun recording, and she had smoke bombs going off with different colors to kind of change the scenery, because we shot it oh, during yeah. the day. And uh, yeah, it was lots of fun. Nice. Lots of fun. Nice. Uh, yeah, so I think we are going to play that music video for So Yesterday. Here it is on the screen right now. This is Head Rush with So Yesterday. Hats falling all over the floor, cut to the bone. Picking up the pieces, falling glass, and no one's alone. We're drawing you over the wall, can't shift you. Sleep on the long so bold Time to make her stay This time it's mine, now watch me shine This time it's mine, now watch me shine Yesterday has left me Hollow to the core Living like that was so shallow You know there's got to be more Some great stuff. If okay. somebody wants to watch the full video and enjoy all of it, where should they go to they see it? They can go it? to YouTube and type in Head Rush So Yesterday. Cool. Great. Um, in terms of your voice, uh, you got that like big classic. It's 
almost Joplin-esque, you know what I mean? I've been told that. Yeah? Yes, I've been okay. told that. <laughs> so, like, what are your vocal influences? Janis Joplin. Janis Joplin, right. <laughs> I love uh, Deep Purple. Okay, cool. Uh, White Snake. Right. So all the, all the oldies. Uh, yeah. All of, all of those bands were big influences. Yeah. On, uh, and, but I also love Anita Baker, so when I do mm-hmm. my blue stuff, I have a, influences coming from that, Netta James and... Uh, so I have I have a little bit of influences drawn from everywhere, but my yeah. rock background is those three primary bands. Yeah. yeah, especially for blues music, I find like there's definitely a lot of focus uh, on like blues vocalists because they're usually just so good and they have such powerful voices. But like old uh, blues women in like the '50s, like you watch like old recordings yeah. of uh, like women on like TV just like playing their guitar and like saying it's just always such big powerful voices yes and tons of character tons of character in the voices there was this uh, I can't remember I think it's like uh, she was this blues woman in like the 40s and 50s and she played this like white Gibson SG yeah and she had this like such big powerful voice I believe that was voice. Big Mama Thornton but yes, I could be wrong that's, yeah, I think that's, that's her yeah. I couldn't remember her yeah. name but she's so cool and she just completely shreds the guitar she wearing, was like, kicked like she was kicked down. butt for sure yeah it's so cool <laughs> and she just tears it up in every recording I've yep. ever watched of her exactly it's so cool and it's just like playing a white Gibson SG in like the 50s <laughs> with three pickups I think she had it's just so overkill <laughs> it's just so cool <laughs> That's pretty cool. Though. Yeah, it's so cool. <laughs> um, so speaking of blues and uh, performing, uh, you played Blues Fest. Yes, you I do. Touched on that briefly. I've played every single Blues Fest. Really, eh? except for one. Really? Yes. Wow. Okay. With different bands, but um, different variations of bands. But probably the Chains played the last. I want to say. Six or seven blues festivals. Really, yeah. eh? That's super yeah. cool. Um, what's the experience with that? Like, it's one of the bigger venues that Thunder Bay has. For sure. Ever. And the tech guys are amazing. Uh, they're the fellows from the auditorium. So it's always great to play on a stage where those guys are doing the sound because it's always impeccable, super professional, yeah, seamless, smooth. Everything you just walk on stage and bam, everything's there. Yeah, and uh, of course the crowds are great to play for, and they've kind of the the festival's kind of growing every year too, so it keeps getting a little bit bigger every year. Hopefully it'll come back again, right? Maybe next year. Um, but it's it's an amazing experience. Like, and, yeah. and you get to meet some of the other musicians too, the other acts that are playing, and uh, you get to see some of the other acts that are playing. So it's 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 just a really cool. And you know what? It's also like a, a reunion, friends reunion. Like you get to mm-hmm. see everybody that you know or new and you get to see different musicians and yeah. friends and it's just a all around great great show to, to to be a part of. Yeah, it must be super cool like playing in local bars and then being able to like play at this big I absolutely festival. love the large stages. I yeah. am not scared to get up on there. I just thrive on that. Yeah, I, it's abs- more energy to feed off oh, of. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. It's just like instantly I go I just feel this energy building up and it's it's almost like uh, you want to explode, and then you just go up on stage and let it all come out through the vocals, right? Yeah. And the energy and, and super uh, cool. Yeah, it's tons of fun. Yeah, I didn't know that the auditorium guys did the uh, sound for Blue yeah. Fest. That's neat. Um, yeah, that explains why it's. Oh, I've been to a couple, and it, the audio is always just clean and just, yeah. You never notice and Bob it. Bob Schindel also does the sound. He's, I believe, a member of the um, union here, uh, the IATSE union. Okay. So he's uh, formerly a Thunder Bay resident. He's now living in Toronto and uh, he comes up and does does the sound as well nice. and he does sound for um kim mitchell tom cochran oh cool yeah and he's also mixing our the chains album as well which is nice. very kind of him that's super cool yeah nice what is uh what's the process for like finishing and mixing an album like there's a lot of work actually there's a lot of extra work um so the, there's a recording the basic recording process where you get right. all your tracks down and then the vocals and then we've we've been adding all the icing parts like percussion and background vocals and we added some violin we've got a zydeco guy oh, wow. playing yeah, on the album so we've got all, all kinds of really interesting things it's happening like george martin production yeah <laughs> all the different instruments yeah, exactly and then uh and then uh rob uh rob jardine who's doing the recording is a guitar player for the chain he's uh sending all of the tracks to bob in toronto and bob mixes them, creates stems, so if we want to add anything extra, it's there right. if we have it. 
And then uh, once that's all done, then we'll get it mastered. So we're almost done all of the, the mixing portion of it. And we've got a few little tweaks to do and then it'll be sent to be mastered. We have to pick which songs we want to do. And yeah, so it's getting close. Nice. Yeah. Are you, in my experience, there's two types of musicians, especially uh, ones that do like avidly, they just live for music. Are you the kind of musician that lives to perform live and recording is a means to perform live or you love recording and performing is just a means to record more music? You, you know, know what I mean? That's an interesting question, but I love them both the same because right. I get two different... Um, there's, I get two different feelings when I play, when I do either or. Like live, you can't beat that feed off of the audience and, yeah. and gather their energy. But in the studio, you need to create your own energy. And that's equally as interesting to create something that sounds as good as you'd want it to be when you're playing live, right? You got to right. create your own excitement. So it's, it's two different processes, but I love... I love them both equally the same. Right, like yeah. the, the two children dilemma. You yeah, love, that's love right. Them both equally. If I had to throw one out, if I had to save one, I don't know which one it would be. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, during COVID, when you couldn't uh, play live, did you rec did you find yourself recording? We more? were doing tons of recording. Everybody was kind of set up at their own households. Okay. And so we would email each other tracks, and you know, like, hey, I got an idea, or if. If I had an idea for a music part, I would just like play it on through my cell phone, send yeah. it to one of the Robs, and because uh, I have a Rob in the, in the rock band and a Rob in the blues band, the two Robs, depending on who it is, right. and uh, and then you know they would create something and then send it back to me and with a drum track and a you know just a recorded drum track, something that we could work with, and right. I'd throw some lyrics and some uh, singing on it and send it back to them, and so we we're kind of it's a little, it's a little, obviously a different process of recording than just kind of yeah, getting together sure. and working right in the room and feeding off of each other. Yeah. But um, it, it was the best case scenario. At least we were still creating something. Yeah. It's crazy how the music industry has went from like 30 years ago, you all have to gather in a big studio to record unless yeah. you're recording onto like a cassette and it's going to be shitty. It was hard to record 30 years ago. Yeah. I, I have been in the music business. I've been in it for right. 35 years. And um, I'm glad you looked a little bit surprised when I said 35. Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, you yeah. look 35. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, no, I have been around in the music business for, right. for over 35 years. And so back then, it was, it was if you wanted to, original music, it was a pretty big process to record and pretty expensive, too. Yeah. So you had to have... Um, you had to save up money to go and record. Nowadays, it's like you can get a decent product yeah. um, from home recording um, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, units and stuff like that. So it's it's pretty crazy how far it's yeah. come. I have a friend that recorded an album with like one $300 mic, one uh, little like uh, mic amplifier console thing, yeah. and then like one mic he stole from high school yeah. or something like that. <laughs> and he recorded a whole album and it sounds like an album. Like yeah. It sounds good. And I know, he just used GarageBand. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, and you could get all those plugins on GarageBand. So yeah. you could get like amp modelers. You can get uh, yeah. effects units. Like all that stuff you had to purchase back then. You had to have all that stuff. Yeah. And uh, it was pretty pricey. And, and stuff was expensive back then. Nowadays you could find, yeah. you know, there's different varying costs for, for production depending for sure. on how much you want to spend. But it's doable now for yeah. the for the backyard guy, right? So it's, it's so I think neat. that's great. Yeah, and like, like look how much cool music has come out. Yeah, and you need to like the barrier for entry and even knowledge has gone like so much less. Like for sure in the fifties and sixties and seventies at Abbey Road, like the recording engineers were like engineers and they used to wear lab coats and it was very mathematical. Now it's like every 15 year old that wants to record a hip hop song yeah. doesn't really need to know much besides no, the basics. No, because you just keep trying out the you effects until it sounds yeah, good, Yeah, right? until it sounds good. You, just, you have an interface right in front of you. You've it's, got like a thousand different options right, yeah. in front of, right at your fingertips, which is crazy. And yeah. also the size of equipment too, right? Everything, so much You could do everything yeah. on a laptop. Yeah. Like you never would have been able to do that 30 years ago. Yeah, a laptop, a MIDI keyboard, and like one mic, and you yeah. can just cr conquer the entire world. That's right, exactly. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, <laughs> which is great because we get so much more music out of it, right? I know. Yeah, it's yeah. so cool. Um, so let's dial it back from conquering the world. Uh, 
<laughs> what's the music scene like in Thunder Bay? Like, is it a pretty tight knit community in your experience? Yeah, I find I find that everybody gets along really well. I always pass along jobs. You know, if somebody calls me and says, "Hey, can you play this gig mm-hmm. or whatever?" and I, you know, if I can't do it, I'll say, "I can't, but let me call a few of my friends and I'll see if one of them can accommodate you." That's super cool. And uh, so there's a pretty good network that way. Nice. And also. I mean, for our size of town, we still have quite a lot of venues that feature live music, and it's it's building back up again because of, you know COVID's gearing down ish, right. and yeah. uh, so far, and uh, you know, so more clubs are they're trying to bring back the live music again. So for our size of community, we actually have a lot of uh, venues and events happening in town that feature live music and feature live local music yeah and there's a surprisingly large amount of local musicians in town for our size of and very talented musicians yeah there's a ton of local musicians and when i say musicians i mean singers as well too (laughs) yes for sure there's uh my joke is just in my experience like playing in bands in town is there's tons of musicians in town but you can't find a drummer to save your life like you can never find a drummer (laughs) I uh, one time I just well we probably we could use some more drummers in town drummers yeah after, I, any drummers I have, all, are I have all the best ones in town over here. yeah I claim them all <laughs> you got them all you, you should be you should uh, like start a drumming agency where yeah, you charge should, people eh? like get one of your drummers yeah, for like a day exactly I uh, one time I put up a bunch of posters all around town looking for a drummer and a bassist yeah and I had people texting me being like do you need a guitar player I play guitar and I was like no I don't need another guitar player. I know everybody wants to be the rock star guitar <laughs> yes, player right so, everybody yeah yeah. <laughs> So I always tell people, it's like, oh, like, I want to learn guitar. I'm like, listen, you should learn piano, bass, or drums. Yeah, Because those sure. are, like, way sure. cooler. It's super hard to find keyboard players. Yeah. And it is super hard to find drummers. So yeah, it's I'm glad I'm glad I've had the both of my drummers I've been playing with for many, many years. Cream of the crop of drummers in Thunder yes. Bay. Yeah, yeah I'm <laughs> well, very, very lucky. Yeah. I've got, I had Jimmy Differ, I've got Chris Plater, and I've got Brad Leishman. I'm keeping, cool. I'm keeping, the, I keep keeping Chris and uh, Brad for sure. Yeah, <laughs> keep, keep the cards close to the chest. That's right, exactly. Yeah. I'm not sharing their phone numbers. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so... How many venues are there in town that, like, there's Black Pirates? There's Black the Wayland. Pirates, Wayland, Foundry, Cheers, um, Red Lion. Okay. Uh, the Hotter does stuff occasionally. Uh, hopefully we'll see some more out of that club, too. It'd be nice to build that place back up because it's a little bit bigger place for bands to play, and they have a stage already set up and stuff. And then there's also a lot of... Um, uh, other events happening like Scott Masemchuk out at Amber Lake does Amber Jam every right. year. It's a three-day concert and he features all local bands, which is very, very kind and generous of him. Yeah. And uh, he's slowly been building up every year and he's got a giant, like a giant stage out there and a huge right. area to do concerts in. And uh, so hopefully, we'll, and he does is starting to do a few things more, but he does Amber Light every year. Yeah, I've seen video from that concert and it just seems... She seems like a great summer oh, thing to do. Oh, it's super fun. And the lake's right beside there. They've got a party bar. Too. Yeah. Got, like, there's, it's tons of fun. Do you usually, like, is, isn't it like two, like an hour or two out of town? It's not far. It's about hour, hour 40 okay. outside of town. Okay, cool. So it just is. do you usually, like, stay out there, like, camp out for the yeah. night? Yeah. That's well, super I, fun. I don't camp. I got I get one of the cabins. One uh, of the cabins. One of the cabins. Right. So. <laughs> What is, that, what is it called? Glamping? Glamping, yes, <laughs> yeah. I glamp. That's right. Because <laughs> I, I bring out, you know, I bring out my fuzzy blanket and nice. I have, uh, we have our fridge and our stove and yeah. our barbecue. Camping and, style. Yeah, that's right, exactly. Yeah, I do yeah I'm not a ground sleeper. I'm too old for that. No? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. I do love when people say like, oh, I'm going camping and they go to like a camp with Wi-Fi. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> They're living like the pioneers do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so besides uh, Head Rush playing on the March uh, 11th and 12th, yeah. right? Uh, what else do you have coming out? Re- it's strictly recording right now because we're trying cool. to get the rest of the album done. So yeah. I'm just doing the rock gigs as they come available. I'm not actively searching out anything. Yeah, uh, I've started rehearsing again with the two piece band. Uh, we started last month because with co- with all the COVID numbers, we had kind of yeah, you know, everybody's trying to be safe, right? So. We're just starting to gear up for that again. And so once we've got another month under our belt, I'll start looking looking for gigs and I'll hit up Cheers and Red Lion. Nice. In case they're listening. Yeah. I'm coming. <laughs> You're coming. <laughs> Be on their radar. That's right, exactly. Um, so the album is uh, 
do you, do you have like a rough timeline when you're hoping to finish it that you we're, might want to talk about? Yeah, we're hoping for uh, the end of the summer to have okay. it ready for the fall time. Cool. So um, for next year's Blues Festival, should it happen, we, we should, we'll have that all ready to go for a release and we'll probably do a CD release party as well. Nice, super yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. so uh, our humble listeners uh, should uh, to watch out for that new album Keep coming out. Keep their eyes out. peeled. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is, uh, and ears. <laughs> does the chain have uh, like a social media account that people can We're on can Facebook, yeah, okay. we're on Facebook. Cool. They can check us out and join and we always post if we're doing something and or playing somewhere, we always post on there for you. And I post on my own page as well, Chrissy Claus. Okay, cool, yeah. yeah. So make sure everybody follows that page. Otherwise, I'll find out and I'll be a little bit upset about that. That's right. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think that is uh, pretty much all the time we have for the show this oh, week. Oh, thank you very much um, for having me. I yeah, appreciate thank it. Thank you so much for coming out. It's tons of fun. I feel like I'm back in the business I'm again. Back in the biz. <laughs> 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 all right. Well, uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in to DMP Postscripts, and uh, we'll see you uh, in a week or two.